My name is Mega Ramaswamy, and I'm a professor of population health at the University of Kansas School of Medicine. I'm here today to talk to you about what feminist practice looks like in public health work. I specifically work with women who are leaving the criminal legal system. On any given day, there are about 1 million women under some sort of criminal legal supervision in this country, whether they're in jails, in prisons, or under some sort of community supervision like probation or parole. Women who have criminal legal system experiences bear a burden of poverty, low education, low employment access opportunities, housing instability, not to mention long histories of trauma around child, physical and sexual violence and intimate partner violence. Women who become incarcerated are disproportionately affected by mental health problems and substance use problems. We use incarceration as a de facto method of structural racism in this country. The criminal legal system is made up of people who are disproportionately black and brown. And so one must take an intersectional lens when thinking about the context in which women end up in the system, their gender, their race, their class, their interactions with the state, whether that's with the foster care system or the criminal legal system, and their unique positionality in American society. So I develop public health interventions for women in the system, which means that we try to talk to women in jails and as they're leaving about their health. And in my case, it's women's health. It's cervical cancer prevention, breast cancer prevention, sexually transmitted infection prevention, and reproductive goal planning. So what does that look like? Well, number one, we reject status quo assumptions about women. We meet women where they're at. When we go into jails, we frequently say to women, this is a no judgment zone. We listen to women's voices, we think about their own experiences, we take a trauma-informed lens to the way they're talking about their health issues, and we treat women as experts of their own lives. Secondly, we leverage social capital frameworks to think about how women can help each other. With reference to women being the experts of their own lives, we have found that when we work with women, they know how to navigate health resources. They know where to get bus rides. They know who the best doctors are. They know where you might get arrested in an emergency room. And that is information that other women can use. And so we think about the women we work with as having tremendous amounts of a certain kind of social capital that can help other women in their same circumstance navigate resources, avoid further criminal legal system involvement, and just lead to better health and social lives. As I said, we also sort of take an intersectional lens um, when we're thinking about how women move through the world. We are always paying attention to dynamics of race and class. And when we think about health, we think about it in context, right? So how does health unfold given lots of homelessness, given active drug use, given limited access to health and mental health care? The criminal legal system in the United States has really become a method of treating mental health problems and drug problems. And let me tell you that is not their function and they don't necessarily do it well. It is an inappropriate response to the circumstances with which women find themselves in the criminal legal system in the first place. So when I think about feminist practice in this context, I am really thinking about appreciating that women are the experts of their own lives, number one. Number two, I am thinking about women as being able to help other women, leveraging their own unique social capital. And number three, I'm taking an intersectional lens, thinking about how women's unique position in terms of race, class, gender, affects their ultimate health and their ability to take care of their health and have um, good, happy lives. Thank you.